OK, so this is section two of structure and replication of DNA. And then we're going to be focusing on the DNA replication side of things. OK, so if you've missed our first video, that was the one on DNA structure. So stop this one and go back uh, to the other one. Um, a reminder, this should go hand in hand with the sway notes. The notes on the sway should be pretty much identical to what you're about to see. All we'll be doing is just trying to put it in a little bit of context. Okay, so in terms of DNA replication, hopefully this idea isn't new to you, it's something we kind of touch on in National 5. Uh, obviously each somatic cell has a nucleus containing 46 chromosomes. You have just done a task on mitosis, talking about mitosis and what needs to happen, and the idea that one of the very first things that has to happen is that that DNA has to replicate itself for mitosis to happen. And this is something that is crucial that you keep in your mind at higher. So, Somatic cells obviously produce more somatic cells by mitosis. They start with 46 chromosomes, they end with 46 chromosomes. But if those 46 chromosomes were just to instantly divide, that would then leave us with 23 and 23, which is not what a somatic cell is about. It needs to have 46. So it starts off with those 46 chromosomes that are single-stranded. It then replicates to have those cross-shaped structures, which still is 46 chromosomes, but has now replicated the DNA fully. So it's when they are pulled apart, then there is still 46 chromosomes in all the newly produced daughter cells. And this is something that comes up in the exam quite a lot, is they will ask you what process is it important that DNA replication occurs for, or it might say about mitosis and ask you to explain why DNA replication is important. And it is all to do with that diploid number, starting with 46, ending with 46, and keeping it consistent. So that's really linked back to that idea of mitosis that you learned about. Okay, so in terms of DNA replication, uh, we're going to look at it in two different, or there's two different ways uh, that we look at it, but for all of it, the main ingredients that are required for it, so the things that must be there, is first of all, free nucleotides. So not free as in they don't cost anything, as in free, they're not attached to other nucleotides. So like last time we looked at the idea, nucleotides attach and it forms that backbone. This is nucleotides that are not attached to form a backbone. So just simply the sugar, the phosphate and the base on its own as a free nucleotide. We then have primers, which are short segments of DNA, which we'll touch on in a wee bit soon. Then there is the DNA replication enzymes, which are DNA polymerase. So that's one enzyme. And the other one is ligase. We also need ATP because it needs energy. And you know ATP is what we use for energy. And we need a template strand. We need to have that strand that is going to be copied for the other strand to be produced. So the first aspect of DNA replication we're going to look at is called the leading strand. So it's really important that you learn the difference. We're going to talk about the lagging strand in a minute, but for right now, we're talking about the leading strand. It's important to note for these, what happens to the leading strand happens at exactly the same time as the lagging strand. It's just, it's hard to focus on both at the same time. So we'll just concentrate on the leading strand, then look at the lagging strand after. Okay, so the leading strand it is the more straightforward of the two strands in terms of what happens. And that has to do with the orientation of it. Remember, we said that these are anti-parallel. So one runs three prime to five prime, one, right, one runs the opposite way up. That's what makes the differences between these. So in terms of the leading strand, first thing that happens is our DNA unwinds. So it's no longer a double helix. And then the hydrogen bonds between our bases break. So the adenine and thymine that are joined together, they get separated because those hydrogen bonds break. My paint diagram is brilliant. I just love that. I'm glad you're proud. OK, the next thing that happens is a primer, so a short segment of DNA. So maybe it has adenine, thymine, guanine, cytosine on it. That will then attach to a specific point at the three prime end of the leading strand. And you have to know it's at the three prime. It is never, ever, ever at the five prime. Really important you know that. Uh, the DNA polymerase then, or you can see in this diagram, first of all, you can see in purple the primer. So that short sequence of DNA is made up of about four nucleotides. That attaches to that three prime end and then DNA polymerase, which is an enzyme. And you need to know it's an enzyme complex, if we're being specific. You need to know that that then goes along and it basically adds complementary free nucleotides one at a time. So you've got the primer and then DNA polymerase will take the first free nucleotide and add it in, then another one and another one and so on. And it will continue to do this in the direction of three prime to five prime. OK, so in terms of the leading strand, that is pretty much it. The main thing you need to know and the thing that they will always ask you about and people get it wrong most is that it is three prime to five prime. It always goes that way. It goes from the small number to the big number. And that's important. 
the primer binds to the point where replication is starting. So wherever the DNA strand wants to be replicated from, the primer starts at the bottom. And then all of the free nucleotides will be added on by DNA polymerase until it reaches the point where replication needs to end. OK. So this is the lagging strand. So we've, if you can see on the left, the leading strand, that's going to get replicated. It's going to have a whole new strand of DNA. The lagging strand would be left all by itself. OK, now there's a problem. If DNA has to be replicated from three to five prime, if we look at the lagging strand, the three prime end is still wound together. But imagine a chromosome as sort of has separated at the bottom, but the top of it is still joined together only in the twisty double helix. That three prime end is inaccessible. And this is a problem. Now, this does not mean we now disobey the rules of biology and start replicating five to three prime because that's not possible okay so instead i'll have to be a little bit more creative in trying to access the three prime end in order to be able to get uh, the second strand the lagging strand replicated so instead of one primer starting at the start of the three prime end several primers start attaching as the lagging strand becomes available so as the lagging strand opens up a primer will buzz in and another primer will buzz in okay so several primers will, will attach okay the next step is DNA polymerase. Again, it will start doing its job. What it will do is it will start at the primer and it will add free nucleotides. It will start at the primer and add free nucleotides, but basically in small chunks. OK, it will just leap from primer to primer, adding nucleotides until it reaches the end or, or a new primer. And then it will stop and then it will jump over that primer and restart. OK, but still replicating from the three to the five prime end each time. So instead of with one smooth uh, single new strand, like on the leading strand, we end up with sh several short little fragments. And you can see there's little gaps between the fragments on the diagram. So you've got your primers in purple. Your red represents your new nucleotides that have been added in and forming that sugar phosphate backbone. But there's a gap every now and then. And that's not ideal because what we want we want a complete strand of DNA. OK, so this is where our second enzyme, DNA ligase, comes in. Now, the role of DNA ligase is to glue together the fragments of the DNA to make an entirely new, brand new, shiny strand of DNA, absolutely indistinguishable from the lagging strand. OK, there's no disadvantage to doing it in the bitty way at all. There's no difference in the DNA strand remotely. The whole point is perfect DNA strand all glued together and it appears perfectly normal. Now, I worry about using the word glue in exam papers and questions and that sort of thing. I've said the word because it makes it clear as to what its function is. But if you're in an exam situation, use the word bind or seal or attaches rather than the word glue, because glue is a physical substance. And I can see lots of examiners getting picky going, oh, it's not a print stick. It can't possibly glue it together. So it's it's important that your language just doesn't doesn't allow you to have points taken away if possible. OK, but that's what it basically does. DNA ligase is going to attach together all of those little fragments, meaning you've got one smooth strand of DNA. So key points from the lagging strand. Instead of one primer at the start going three to five, you've got several primers that are going to attach as the three prime end opens up. OK, DNA polymerase is going to add the nucleotides to the primers from the three to the five prime direction. That is not different uh, from the, lag, the, the leading strand definition at all. OK, several fragments of DNA will get created and then DNA ligase will come together to attach together the fragments and make a whole new copy of the lagging strand. OK, now this little GIF just shows that action in motion. OK, now you can see the bottom strand. That's going to be your lagging strand. The top strand, that's the leading strand. Ignore helicase. OK, we you will not get asked about helicase its name. It's just the name of an enzyme that's going to unwind the chromosome. OK, but you can see this process occurring is you've got a little enzyme that's going to add the primer in in pink. And then your DNA polymerase is in green with the safety hat, safety hat on. And then what you'll get is ligase coming in and gluing together the lagging strand fragments. So sit on this slide for as long as you like. If it makes it clear, we also have video links for you uh, which show the whole process as well. One thing to be careful about is Amoeba Sisters, their video. This is where I nicked this gift from. They talk about replication happening from the five to three prime end. 
utterly ignore them, they are talking about the creation of the new strand. Uh, it's always three to five prime. Okay, never say five to three. Okay. Uh, just before we go on to the summary, I'm going to make one point that I hope was common sense and that most of you realise it because you came through National 5, but just for those of you who are crashing uh, and those who may have just forgot just to make it clear, DNA replication is happening with those matching complementary DNA bases. So that nucleotide that is matching for the leading strand or the lagging strand, that the, the new DNA strand that has been made out of these free nucleotides, they are the complementary base pairs. It is the way that we've talked about replication in National 5. If you forgot that, go back and have a look, look on BBC Bite Size. But just remember that it's always complementary base pairs. An A or an adenine, I should say, will never match an adenine. It's always adenine thymine, no matter what, especially in this process. Um, so in terms of summary of this video and DNA replication, um, some of the components of DNA replication that you have to know in their function, you have to know what a primer is. So the idea, it's that short sequence of complementary nucleotides and it will always bind to a three prime end of DNA to start the replication process. Okay, then you've got important enzyme number one is DNA polymerase. Now you have to have the DNA in front of it. The reason why is when we look at gene expression, there's RNA polymerase because why would we make your lives any easier? Uh, so you have to specify DNA polymerase for DNA replication and it's an enzyme that's gonna add complementary nucleotides as Ms. Armstrong was saying to the new DNA strand. So if the DNA polymerase is trotting along and it sees a cytosine on the template strand, it's going to add a guanine in. Okay? okay. Then there's the leading strand. So this is a strand of DNA that is replicated continuously from the three prime to the five end, prime end. That's the nice easy one. Okay. And then you've got your lagging strand, which is the strand that's replicated in fragments because the three prime end isn't open, but it is still replicated from the three to the five prime end. And final thing, that other enzyme, which is called ligase, you can call it DNA ligase, but we're being nice, there's not another one. You can get away with just saying ligase, unlike DNA polymerase, like Miss Mills just said. And that's the enzyme that seals together the fragments on the lagging strand. So the one that acts like glue, but you're never going to say glue, you're going to say seals. Yeah. So that's what ligase does. Yeah, I think that set of words is a bit better. Okay, so that is DNA replication. Now, in the PLP, there are a few links that take you to... Uh, videos looking at DNA replication. There's a couple on YouTube. They go a bit more complicated than you actually need. They add in the roles of things like helicase, primase, which is the enzyme that adds the primer in. You don't need to know these. Okay, everything that's on this screen right now, those are the things that you need to be able to name and describe the role of in DNA replication. But the visuals are nice because they give mm -hmm. a really good video, a really good visual yeah. that we can't quite give. I right know, now. despite my magnificent paint drawings. Okay, I'll see you in the next video then.